I'm Adam from The Army Painter, and today we are going to paint up a tree monster for my Saga Age of Magic army. Saga Age of Magic is one of our favorite games to play back at our headquarters in Denmark. In fact, we sometimes have weekend tournaments where we come back to work on the weekends to face off in war on the tabletop. Now, one of the things that I love about Saga Age of Magic is the versatility and the freedom that you have in crafting your army. You can use models from any miniature maker out there in the world. Let's take a look at my army and some of the models that I've already completed. As you can see, I've chosen a Lords of the Wild theme army. One of my favorite armies growing up were the old Wood Elves from Games Workshop. And in fact, I used some models from Games Workshop here and their Sylvaneth model range. I also have some models from WizKids and I even have a sorcerer that I'm working on that comes from my Guild Ball Falconer set. I can't wait to field him. In Saga Age of Magic, you have everything from HQs to levies, swarms. You have regular warriors and your Heath Guard, which are your elite troops. You even are allowed to have some creatures. In my army, I already have a few larger tree models and some giant eagles, which I plan to use in my next battle when I head back to Denmark. But one thing you'll notice that this army is lacking is a giant monster. So I took this opportunity to showcase our new airbrush medium with this giant tree monster. The paints that you're gonna need for this tutorial are Color Primer or War Paints Angel Green, Crypt Wraith, Army Green, Combat Fatigues, Quick Shade Military Shader, Alien Purple, Oozing Purple, Quick Shade Purple Tone, Pixie Pink, Babe Blonde, Green Tone, Blue Tone, Hydra Turquoise, Royal Cloak, and Toxic Mist. I began by priming the model with Color Primer Angel Green. Now, you can spray our brush on gray primer through the airbrush and then base coat it with Angel Green if you want to, but this is the way I decided to go about painting this tree. And you're gonna wanna start by adding one part airbrush medium to two parts war paint. Add it to your airbrush and give it a good mix, a thorough mix with an old brush, just like so. While we do recommend starting with one part medium to two parts war paint when you're using our airbrush medium, this can skew more or less medium depending on the effects that you're trying to achieve or the pressure that you're pushing from your compressor. I tend to run a slightly higher pressure because I live in a very humid environment. So with that, I actually add a little bit more paint to the mixture. But what you're really going for is a nice creamy and milky consistency. Before I begin painting, I like to give a test spray just to make sure that the paint is flowing properly and at the right consistency. As you can see, I just sprayed a little bit on my gloves there. Now, I'm going to coat the entire model in Crypt Wraith. This is a nice dark grayish green, a great color for this massive tree monster that we're painting here today. It's okay if some of the angel green shows through underneath. It's just gonna add to the effect because you're able to pull off some great gradation when using an airbrush. Now that we've base coated the entire model with Crypt Wraith, we're going to apply our first highlight. Using the airbrush from a downward, almost 45 degree angle, we're going to apply a highlight of army green. And we're just gonna hit the raised areas on the models. We're focusing here on the top of the head of our tree monster, the center of the chest, and just parts of the the feet and the legs you see here on the bottoms of the legs and the tops of the knees of this tree monster where the light would catch it. Once we're happy with our first highlight, we're gonna move on to a second highlight of Combat Fatigues. This is a great, very light grayish green color. I love this color. It's one of my favorite in the lineup and you can see it almost pops. It appears as it's almost white on screen, but I assure you it is a very faint green. And we're gonna focus this just in the center of our first highlight, allowing that gradation, that fade to work its way back on the model. This model is perfect for pulling off some of these airbrush effects. Give the model a once over and look around just to make sure that you've hit all of the highlight spots and focal points that you want to. 
Generally, you would think that you're going to start with a wash, but I like to actually add a dry brush at this stage, and we're gonna dry brush this model twice. We're dry brushing this model to catch some of the areas that we can't quite hit with an airbrush, the finer detailed areas like the roots of the saplings and little trees growing off his legs. This helps to blend in those highlights and mesh them together across the entirety of the model before the wash step. Speaking of wash step, we're gonna take military shader and right out of the pot, we don't even need to thin this down too much. We're just going to apply this over the entirety of the model. It's okay if you get a little loose here. Of course, you don't want any major pulling. You just wanna make sure you get good even coverage of this, that it's, a, it's washing into the recesses because we are going to dry brush and hit it one more time with a slight airbrush in later steps. So just go ahead and make sure that you apply the military shader across the entirety of the model. You don't wanna miss out on any of the nooks and crannies and details on the model. I told you that we'd be applying another dry brush once the wash is dried, we're gonna do just that. This time, just focusing on the most raised areas. We're just trying to pick out those highlights once again because the washing stage will certainly darken the model down a little bit. It adds a slight stain to the model over the entirety of the model. It's always good to keep that dry brush handy when you're painting big organic models like this while using the airbrush. The final step here while painting the green parts of our treatment is to go back to the airbrush and combat fatigues. We're using this color a lot today and we're just going to make sure that we're blending those greens together, getting a nice smooth transition of that highlight color across the model. Sometimes when you apply a wash or a dry brush, some of the areas that you're painting can become a little bit disjointed. This just ties it all back together and we have a really bright focal point on these areas of our tree monster. We're gonna add some combat fatigues to our wet palette. I love using this wet palette. It keeps your paints nice and pliable. We're gonna apply and just pick out some highlight areas. When you're spraying, especially when you properly thin your paints through an airbrush, you're going to get very light and not quite as concentrated colors when applied to the model. So what you can oftentimes do with many of the colors is just use that same color as your initial highlight. I'm just gonna add one brush highlight to this model, but you could go ahead and maybe apply some white as a mixture to bring this out a little bit more, but I don't think that you need to. On such a big model, you have enough contrast and, and separation to just go ahead and apply that combat fatigues. Now I'm just picking out the little uh, nooks and crannies on here, these little parts of the model that are jutting out. There's no real rhyme or reason. I'm just finding the areas that are sticking out the most and applying some combat fatigues. It's a small highlight there. Now before we move on to the rest of the model, I did wanna bust out some of that babe blonde and I'm just gonna apply this to the little leaves on the saplings that are growing off of our tree monster. Now, we'll come back to this a bit later. Well, you could mask off some of these areas that I'm about to paint in purple and turquoise using masking tape or any kind of masking material. You can make it really easy on yourself by just blocking these colors in with a large paintbrush. Give it one or two thin coats, and then you can go back with the airbrush to apply your highlights a little bit more carefully. And we're gonna do that in these next steps. So you can see I have my Hydra Turquoise and Alien Purple applied to my wet palette. And with my Regiment brush, I'm just gonna load it up, thin it down, and I'm gonna apply a couple thin coats of this Alien Purple to this tree robe, this foliage robe that our tree monster has kind of growing from his waist. I don't know if you wanna call this a loin cloth. And I'm also going to apply this to the handle of his sword. Just very simple here, painting inside the lines with our Alien Purple. You want to apply a second thin coat when you're done here. Once that's dried, we're going to do a 50-50 mix of Alien Purple and Oozing Purple, and we're just gonna find some areas on this model that we already based in in Alien Purple to highlight and bring out. You notice that I'm not masking anything off here. I'm just moving the model in a direction to where I'm not going to get some overspray on the parts that I've already painted. Now, if you're worried about that, you could take a piece of plastic card or card or even paper and wedge it in between the cloak and the knee here. I'm not too concerned with it, but the more you practice with an airbrush, the better control you're going to have. Now we're moving right on to oozing purple as a final highlight to all the purple areas of 
this tree monster. Now the trick here is that we just wanna focus this on the outer edges of the handle and the loin cloth. We wanna paint this just inside of the 50-50 mixture, our initial highlight that we previously painted. And what we're gonna do here is just apply this very lightly and work up this highlight. It's gonna add a nice transition that's really gonna pop on the model. Now we're moving right on to the washing step for all of the purple on the model. We're gonna apply a quick shade purple tone right out of the bottle. We don't need to thin this down too much to the loincloth and the handle. And you can already see the shading and contrast that you're able to pull off as that wash works its way into the recesses on this loincloth. And what's gonna happen as we get this covered over the entirety of the cloth is that you're gonna still be able to see that nice transition from alien purple, the darker purple, to oozing purple underneath. The beauty in using an airbrush really starts to shine when you begin adding other traditional techniques like washing and edge highlighting. Anybody that has an airbrush or is interested in using an airbrush as a technique, you'll be happy to know that our airbrush medium works perfectly with our acrylics war paints, metallics war paints, and any high quality soft body acrylic paint on the market today. With the washing complete, we're gonna give that some time to dry and we're gonna move right on to the highlight stage. I'm just taking oozing purple, add it to my wet palette, thin it down nice and, and thin so we have nice control. And I'm just going to, with a character brush here, I'm just going to apply this to all of the edges of these leaves on the Treeman's loin cloth, if that's what we wanna call it. That's what we've been calling it. That's what it is. So we're just applying this just drawing, tracing the edges here. You can't quite get the edge of the brush in there, so we have to be very careful. That's where thin paints really tend to benefit you in the highlighting stage, because you have more control. And as we're applying these highlights, you really get to see why we use the airbrush in this technique, because you're picking out these highlights and you're allowing the transition that we created to show through. We're also going to pick out the highlights on the handle of our giant tree monster sword. And then when you get to these lower areas on the loincloth, you can just take the side of your brush and you can trace that oozing purple highlight right around the edges very simply. Go about doing this, spend some time, be patient and careful. You're really gonna love the effect that you get when you're done. I take a little bit of pixie pink just to brighten and soften this up and it also helps to shift the bluish purple tone to a reddish. You, you kind of push that saturation a little bit more and you can see I'm just very carefully, very quickly, adding this to the lower edges of the loincloth highlights. No real secret tech, I'm just quickly applying this highlight to the lower edges of all the areas on this loincloth. And it adds just nice little areas to draw your eye when you're looking at the model once it's complete. And that'll do for all of the purple on our tree monster. Next, we're going to move on to all of the glowing effects that we wanna have because this is a tree monster after all. Something made this giant tree come to life. And I imagine a bluish turquoise uh, life source bringing it to life. So I'm gonna paint hydro turquoise to all of the inner areas like this area in the abdomen of our tree men. I'm gonna also paint this to the eyes and some of the areas in the joints of our tree men. He's also got these little growths growing off of him. I imagine that they're gonna be part of the magic that brings him back to life. Maybe my sorcerer is the one that controls all of these tree creatures and monsters in my saga army and makes them come to life. He casts a magic spell to bring the forest back to life and make them ready for war. So we're just going to apply our Hydra Turquoise all over the models that we want to have glowing. I'm also going to apply this to his claws and as you can see here on the sword. For our first highlight, we're going to apply Royal Cloak and this pushes that turquoise a little bit further to the greener area. And we're gonna apply this to the center of all the areas that we just based in in Hydra Turquoise and just to the tip of the sword and around the outer edges. We wanna leave some of that Hydra Turquoise in the center. You can see it here. See me pull that Royal Cloak down the top, fade it into the Hydra Turquoise and just on the outer edges of the sword there. And our final color for all the turquoise bits is going to be Toxic Mist. And you can see that there's a little bit of overspray happening. I'm okay with that. That's just gonna to add to the magic glow effect that brought this tree monster to life. You're gonna to begin to see a pattern here. Once you're finished with all of the airbrushed highlights, we are going to apply a wash. This time I did a about a 50-50 mix of quick shade blue tone and green tone. 
This is a nice color that will work really nicely with the turquoise, the bluish turquoise areas that we've painted. I'm just going to apply this very loosely. Careful not to get any of this wash on the areas we've previously painted in our Combat Fatigues Army Green color or the purple bits. We just want to make sure that this quick shade mixture works its way into the recesses. It's not pooling too, too much. If it does begin to pool, just take your brush and flick it away. I'm also going to apply this to those little gross, these little tree tumors that are growing on the outside of our tree monster. So you see here, I'm just wicking it away a little bit. And we're also going to apply it to the sword. Any area that's blue and turquoise on this model, we want to apply this quick shade mixture to, to bring out the shading, contrast, and definition of these areas before we move forward and apply a highlight. Give that wash a good 30 minutes to dry, and then you can come back with your paintbrush to finish off all of these areas on the model. And we're gonna move on to the highlighting stage, this time with Toxic Mist. I have a detail brush here, and I've thinned down my paints using the Army Painter Wet Palette, so I have ultimate control, which is extremely important, especially when you're painting in features on the face and around the eyes of your model, because that tends to be a focal point of any model that you're painting. These thin down paints we're going to apply now with a character brush just to the raised areas inside of all these glowing effects. This is very simple. We're just tracing this thin down toxic mist over the most raised areas on the model. Now, when you have a hard edge on your model, like the claws that you see here, these big mass, monstrous tree claws, you just take the edge of your brush and you trace it along the side. This is highlighting on easy mode. Any painter will tell you that. So when you have thin down paint, you don't want to have too much on the bristles of your brush because then you can overpaint a little bit, which you know what I, I think I'm going to do right here. A little bit, I overpainted just a little bit, but when you're working with thin down paints, it's okay. You could just brush it off, no harm, no foul. And once you've completed all of the turquoise and blue highlights on the model, we're gonna move on to quick shade green tone. We're just gonna apply this very quickly, very simply to all of the leaves that we previously airbrushed in Babe Blonde. Then once that wash is dried, we're gonna take that Babe Blonde and just pick out the highlights, letting that green settle into the center and the recesses of these leaves. This is a very simple effect. You can go ahead and add an extra highlight if you wanted to by adding a little bit of white or using maybe arid earth but I'm fine with just this bright yellow that Babe Blonde gives you here. Once you've finished applying the highlight of Babe Blonde, your tree monster is complete, and look at this fella. He is a monstrous creature, and he fits in with the rest of my army. I'm very excited about it. We're gonna have a lot more airbrushing tutorials to show you how to get the most out of our brand new airbrush medium with your war paints coming your way really soon. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as much as I enjoyed painting up this giant tree monster for my Saga Age of Magic Force. I can't wait to see how he or she, how it fares on the battlefield. Remember, the new airbrush medium is going to be in stores real soon. You can pre-order it on our website at www.thearmypainter.com. Remember that the magic in miniature painting is that it can be as simple or as challenging as you'd like it to be. But with the right techniques, you're sure to achieve some great results. We'll see you next time.